Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Cooks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host, Calderness. This episode is going to be all the world's news, ladies and gentlemen, from our trip down to Memphis, Tennessee, to all the events that transpired, to our trip back up to where we rightfully belong. This is going to be episode 432. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six how people you? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is the Billion Clicks Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yeah, Memphis Simeon is dead. I buried him. <laughs> hey. And joining us uh, this week is Ian Chainsaw. What's going on, Ian? Oh, it's going well. I also helped bury Memphis Simeon. <laughs> oh, whoa. Implication. Wow, dang. <laughs> the implications are heavy right now. Okay. I mean, the other wow. Simeon was very convincing. I, I just kind of went along with it. So. That's true. Okay. okay. Memphis Simeon was just too cool, calm, collected. Had he had to go. Room. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we have our normal Simeon back with us. We're going to skip what made us happy this week, guys. Uh, we're just going to get right into Worlds. There is a lot to talk about. Every year, it's the most spectacular event in live entertainment. This is the culmination of everything I've ever worked for. Come on, go! Call the granddaddy of them all, and you stand on the grand stage of them all. I've been waiting for this my whole life. There's really that X factor and intangible I can't explain. It's just that. Come on, it all. It's the chance to live forever. So, starting off with day one, this is Tuesday on our trip down there. We get in the car, or I get in the car. I drive to Sioux Falls, blah, 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 blah. Get to Sioux Falls, get in with James, uh, James Patreon member. Shout out James Tipton Howlett here. Uh, he came down to Worlds Less. Glad he was able to make it and uh, helped us out with some stuff. So we get in with James, grab Ian, grab some Five Guys road. Decided to, I will say, skip a shake at Five Guys. I did not want to start in South Dakota. Uh, that would have just been disgusting. So we uh, drive down to Omaha. Nothing crazy happens on the way except for there is, we were in Iowa, almost Omaha, three or four large bales of hay in the middle of the interstate. I would have just totaled us right then and there had we hit these bad boys going like 75, 80 miles an hour. Uh, so we all kind of noticed at the same time, We're like, oh, change lanes, change lanes, or whatever. There's like a one car not really letting us in, uh, a little rough. And then go past them, call 911, let them know there's uh, obstruction on the road. And about a mile later, drive past a, a trucker looking at his uh, load of hay, missing several bales off the back and... Probably wishing he was not in that situation right now because that's real rough. But besides almost dying, we get to Omaha, pseudo, not free. And then we run into some banner problems as we wanted to deck out our booth with a cool, stylish banner from Luke. Um, but what happens? In yeah, so Luke designed this sweet Dial H for Hero Clicks banner for us so that we would have a little bit more professional looking booth. Um, I guess we should say, for anyone that's not in the know, uh, we went to Worlds to do coverage. We did not go to play. So uh, that's the reason why we had our own little booth and uh, a banner for it. But uh, kind of waited to last minute, ordered it from Office Max. I called them that morning. Uh, that would have been Wednesday morning. No, Tuesday morning. I called them Tuesday morning as the guys were on their way to Omaha. And Office Max opens at 10 a.m. and so I called them at like 10 30 and I asked if they would be able to get it done that day they assured me that they would I asked if they had enough product they assured me they did so I ordered it like 50 60 bucks no big deal but uh and then like the little cart thing where it was like your order is like pending it never updated to ready for pickup or anything like that and so about 5 p.m. 
I think I was getting nervous because they closed that side of like the store at six. So I was like, they've only got an hour. They haven't updated it. And I was like, maybe they got it done and they just didn't update it. So I call. Um, took me a while to get through. They must have been really busy because it just kept ringing. And then I was on hold for an absurd amount of time at one point. Uh, <laughs> then I got some of the angriest uh, like workers I've ever experienced uh, working in like customer service roles. And uh, they just were not having like not having it with me. I was like, uh, hey, I ordered this. Is this going to be done? They said, well, did you order it today? I said, yes. And they said, well, then it's not going to be done today. And I was like, well, someone else told me that it would be. But I, I can't argue with facts. Like if it's not going to be done, it's not going to be done. So um, I had to call back. Because they thought that I was done talking to them, but I was not. So I had to call back, get my refund, so that I could reorder it in Memphis. So we could just pick it up while we were down there. Which, to be honest, was probably should have just started with that. Uh, would have made more sense anyhow. Didn't really need it for the drive. But yeah, Banner turned out great. Um, picked it up from the Office Max there. They got it done promptly and without any sass. So that was very cool. Um, yeah. Okay. And then we Love tried it. ordering a pizza, and uh, the same thing happened. <laughs> Man, that yeah, was messed big, up. Big miscommunication. It was James's birthday, and they did not put candles on the pizza, and it was so sad. It was pretty messed up. I was like, "Wow." They also we were we there. all shed a tear or two. I mean, it yeah, was, we also <laughs> we also straight up ordered like a two liter Mountain Dew or whatever. And just did not did not get thrown in with the pizza when we got there. Yeah, and like. After after like an hour or so of waiting, we call. They're like, "Oh, we thought this was a carryout." It's like we repeated this address like four times. Like, <laughs> so that was just never uh, give you an address <laughs> for carryout pizza. Easy. Yeah, you um, know, as you do, as you do. Uh, but yeah, then the rest of the road trip goes off that hitch. We stay in again, Missouri Spring. Yeah, Springfield, Missouri. Gosh, third eighteenth times the charm. Springfield, Missouri at the Green Stay. So shout out to the Green Stay. Very nice, very, very cool hotel. Uh, all their rooms are themed with animals or fish or some type of creature, which is kind of cool. And we stay in, of all rooms, the Dolphin Room. So no one could see us outside four squares whilst we were in the Dolphin Room, which is pretty pretty fun that uh, of all rooms, we get one that could be a Heroclix reference. So when we, you know, get some good rest, we take off the next day and besides a minor... Uh, speeding ticket inconvenience that our driver heard upon himself, and then a uh, curious elderly woman talking to the officer while we're pulled over, and then going back about her day, but the wrong direction on the highway. Uh, once that was all settled, um, we were good to go, as weird as that 30 minutes of our lives were. And yeah, after a strange warning from a lady at a <laughs> liquor a, store, liquor store on the yeah. way, uh, to it, tell was us a, to be it was a rest then. stop for us, but a liquor store for everyone else. Right. Uh, yeah, I was about to say. I, I really thought it was like a grocery store when we went in there. I was like, you all know, right, cool. Almost Roadside zero grocery. food. Yeah. Us hungry boys. I ended up getting a water and had a chips. <laughs> not, not great food options off actually it was mo- it was mostly yeah it was mostly liquor so not really something to do when driving but then we arrived in memphis tennessee uh simeon like you said got the banner and we uh, ian you want to go into the whole setup and meeting all the cool whiz kids crew and everything because it was it was a great time oh gosh excuse me so we walk in you know convention hall is pretty dead there uh everyone greets us that was really cool i was unsure if we were kind of welcome on that like day zero but uh they gave us a space we started setting stuff up everything was going smoothly and then when we get to the computer portion of things i'm plugging in the monitor trying to turn it on and it's just giving me a black screen no error message nothing so that was instantly very concerning my first thought is okay well my computer is just like shot you know like what is happening really hoping it was just the monitor so Simeon and James get dispatched out to Office Max again to go pick up a monitor to try this with, and then we end up boxing up the computer and just bringing it back to the hotel. So kind of defeated the purpose of like everything we just did. Right. And uh, thankfully, uh, when we were in the hotel, 
testing everything. It was just an issue with the monitor, which uh, still dealing with. That's okay. But uh, we did get that resolved, and then everything went pretty smoothly after that. So nothing horrible, but that, oh man, that first like three, four hour period of being in Memphis, it was literally just like, what are we going to do? What's wrong with my computer? Um, like, are we going to even be able to do this? Oh my gosh. So well, and part glad of that, to have that resolved for sure. <laughs> part of that little three, four hour like stint while we were still like unsure we were trying to get the computer back to the hotel and they did not have a reservation for us. Oh um, yeah. So we yep. sent Calder in, uh, tried all the names, tried all the different, uh, like logos. I don't know, like all the, all the possibilities, you know, like yeah, I'm telling the, uh, the Calder, me, is it under a Calder Matt? <laughs> it's like, no, my, it's under Simeon Bruce. No, Ian Eggleston. No, Dial H. No, Rowdy Ranch Hand, Rawhide Sterling, Billion Clicks Bruce. <laughs> any of these or any of these are you about? <laughs> For some reason, James Tipton? Is it possibly? <laughs> yeah. I the, like, the person that no they way. didn't know was going to be here? Is is it going to be under that? Um, uh, I don't have a James Tipton, but I do have a James Tipton Howlett. Yes, thank <laughs> you. Our room is available. Uh, no, they had just checked us in already. They checked us in the day before. So right. uh, issue got resolved eventually, but it, it did take quite some convincing like we are supposed to be here we even had like scott had <laughs> to come up and like th like throttle the guy he grabbed him by like the collar and i was like whoa i didn't realize how violent scott can get but man that poor guy yeah, scott like shook him dude like, that yeah. guy was he was shook after uh after that run and i was like man he feared for his life there on his eyes he was like oh never again i'm sorry <laughs> sir I, sh I shall never hurt the house of whiz kid yeah. such a way <laughs> <laughs> um so but yeah everything was uphill after that though that was yeah <laughs> that was yeah. the yeah. true low point we got everything figured out internet was never great but we you know we called an audible midway through because we wouldn't we weren't able to stream it just was not working it was even when it was working it was so choppy it was just not worth even attempting so we called an audible switch to the video and uploading like stuff like that but yeah, everything what, uh, was uphill after day one. Like what you guys saw on YouTube was like mostly these videos that we were able to get up as the event was happening, which was really awesome. We were able to do live streams on Facebook, which is really cool since data was doing well. And then did like two live streams on YouTube that had you guys saw the going soon or like almost starting uh, graphic and then the little side panel. There's like. 20 more graphics that we had prepared for live streams that yeah. weekend that Luke made for us. I just and they never were so got cool. Used. Yeah, they were. Oh. Man. We had such a cool one for Extreme Tarot that we did not get to use, which was a huge bummer, but that's okay. It's always next year. Uh, so jumping into Thursday, that was followed by a little bit more setup in the morning as it didn't start till 2. We were able to get the first look at the Blade figures. You guys know there's usually just a case at Worlds. We did post this. The Arachnite, we got to see his sculpt, which is just like mind blowingly incredible. Uh, the Arachnite chase for Warp World, uh, Avengers Forever. That was dope. And then the Bystanders, which are also really cool, we got to see the three of them were ants for the Tony Stark Ant Man. And then like almost all the rest of them were all Kang the Conquerors or some version of Kang the Conqueror. There's a Golden Age one, Alternate Universe one, Ortis, all this stuff. We're thinking maybe either like a Legacy Kang pops it out or like the Miss Kang, Kamala Khan, Kang, Warp World Chase might, uh, might pop these guys out. And I will say, as I'm looking, all the Kangs except for the Rookie Infinity Challenge are sold out on a certain website. <laughs> Um, and then over on Cool Stuff Inc. Also, I think these Kangs are. Let me let me let me check. Uh, let's see, uh, maybe maybe there's Legacy Kang going around, or maybe you know people just love Kang and bought him all up, which is also a real possibility because Kang is dope. Yeah, the only Kang in stock, Cool Stuff Inc. is Ian's favorite Kang, the title character Kang, mm. um, <laughs> Avengers Black oh. Panther and the Illuminati. So I'm a uh, I'm betting on the Chaos War Kang. That's the one I would like to see okay. in the legacy. I I am currently betting on any version of Supernova Kang because it's the only Kang that I not only have one of each, but also too much of. Because I opened again too much Supernova. I really <laughs> hope really hope it's that Kang. 
That'd be great. And he, he looks cool. He's got his double, like, gun shooter, laser blaster things. Um, I'm just hoping it's not the Infinity Challenge Kang, because there's enough stuff from Infinity Challenge that gets Legacy'd. Don't need another. He also has, like, a 15... No, he has a 13 attack, but he has, like, 2 damage is, like, his veteran. It's a real weird Kang. I mean, he has Rage Combat Expert, but that means he has a, a 3 damage with a 14 attack. With, of course, top dial phasing, because Anyways, that's uh, that was all the new stuff that was in the case, and I will say, spoiler, for the rest of the weekend, um, unlike some days where they kind of change what's in the case, they did this for Gen Con last year, and in Worlds before, they never really messed with the case. What was in the case was was in the case the whole weekend. That is, that is all we got to see, so they, they kept us wanting, that's for sure. Uh, Silver Age kicked off, though, Thursday. There's also qualifiers, uh, but we'll get into Silver Age really quickly before we jump into any qualifiers. The did a little man on the ground. I had my little mic. Ian and I were talking to players about what they were building for Silver Age. People went into their teams. Some people were just like, I'm playing monsters. I was like, hey, very cool. Uh, so we talked to a lot of players about what they're playing. All those videos are up on the channel if you want to learn more about the different players that were playing in Silver Age. As well as we have an interview with the uh, champion that won Silver Age. It was Dan Powell. Running a very similar Thanos build. Kind of the bummer thing I think about Silver Age. and I'll, Although this is the easiest way to get into it. And like we did mention before, it's also easier just to pack this way when you go to a big convention like this. But a lot of people were just running their modern age team with some ID cards. And that was their Silver Age build. Or, you know, some other Silver Age side stuff. It was mostly their modern team. Retail, and even Dan, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah, some retail. Like, Mangog is literally so dummy good. You know, like, a bunch of uh, old Surter, better than current legacies, like, stuff like that, you know, where it's like, of course, they retail. They're dope. Carnage symbiotes, all that stuff. Oh, so good. But yeah, it's kind of a, a bit of a letdown seeing like all the stuff you could do in silver, but then people just kind of play modern and don't really mess around with it. And that's kind of my problem with like Golden Age tournaments or Silver Age tournaments is a lot of people do just play modern because of power creep, because of whatever. I think Golden Age is different though, because Golden Age actually has like a big, big difference with like all and other stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. But even Dan said in his interview where it's like, if you're scared to try out silver, just play your modern team. Which I think that's a good mentality to have when you want to just try out silver. You have never played it before, just sure, play your modern team. But once you get into it, I would like to see some more creativity. As all of us have been playing since about silver's been a thing, um, ever since the card change. So it would be cool, because we all have figures from those old eras and stuff. It'd be cool to see more use of those figures and less just modern stuff with extra flavor. Yeah, uh, but I will say we kind of went into this last time we recorded, and it was a cool team to mention again. But Lucas Van Holland got second, so South Dakota represent. He played his four tri. He played four tri sentinels, I believe. You said soldier, not soldier supreme. Wow, Sheriff Strange. <laughs> now I can't get it right. Uh, Scarlet Witch is seventy five, and then I think Magic Jasper's and other stuff probably in there. It's really cool in a. I think he played Thanos almost every single round, which is really rough to play against. He won, though, which is really cool, because, like, obviously Thanos has done a barrier. My Sentinels are like, yeah, barrier's awesome. Simeon, you said they are protected mind control, and, like, in cap, and a bunch of other stuff. That's yeah, like, oh, they've got traded we forgot about that. They obviously open up, like, pathways um, just by, like, walking and stuff like that. The ping damage used to be, like, one of their best parts, but honestly, in, like... I mean, with the rules change, their pulse wave's not as great, but, like, a retail pulse wave is still kind of nuts. It's still very solid. And when you're, you know, talking about, like, Lucas played against three Thanoses, he would have played against a fourth had the finals match happened, which we'll get to that in a second. Um, Scarlet Witch shutting off powers with her rune marker. You've got the retail pulse wave. You've got the free damage when you break a piece of blocking. It, it shapes out to be pretty nasty. Sheriff Strange, a, a battle world favorite, he uh, makes it so that you have to take a double power action to do a di a, an ID call in, excuse me. Yeah. So, Which very nasty team. If you have an action token on you, you're not calling an ID card in until you clear that action token from that character. Which is like, it shifts the tempo a lot. It, I mean, obviously he was played quite a bit when ID cards were modern. Um, but if you're doing like a heavy reliance on ID cards or you just like get to like a pivotal moment where like, oh, calling in like Beast would be great right here. 
uh, he kind of shuts that down and like really shifts the tempo. Makes it really, really frustrating sometimes when you're playing against him. Yeah. Another fun fact, too, about Lucas's team is that more than half of it is silver. You've got 120 points of Tri-Sentinels, and you've got 50 points with Sheriff Strange, and then all the IDs shapes out to like 180, 190. Pretty cool. Okay. That, that I really do dig that. It just the majority of it being silver is just me more fun and what like silver should be yeah awesome with, with stuff you know because i always find myself reaching back into silver or golden eight realizing that weird funky game mechanics now work in a totally different way with like some modern stuff it's really fun to maybe pull in older pieces and mix the two but in not the way they kind of do it i shouldn't say the royal day but a lot of people do, where it's just like, oh, here's my modern team. What makes it better? Oh, sure. Yeah, there's some old support. Here's some here's Groot. Support. Here's Groot, yeah. I yeah. mean, Groot does make I it think a we saw a better. ton of Groots. I think we can all agree that if you want to play Silver, you don't need a Groot, but I think you should probably look into getting the super rare Groot, uh, the 2x2 two two from Avengers Infinity. He is just so good. He is just actually so good. So he's definitely worth looking at on a Silver team. Mudman we saw. Silver. Man many silver many too? did we see? Uh, no. uh, right? Yeah. Zero. I think, Zero. I think one person we talked to actually had a mud man on their build. See? Yeah. I think there was maybe one. So also uh also Doug, um, you know, because it is silver now, but it's a Micron and Adam. And I'm like, I always big fan of Micron and Adam. Yeah. They're so fun. Yeah. So I, I did like the I think Clifford was playing the Micron Adam team. That was really cool. You guys can check out all these teams and more and an interview with Dan Powell, the winner of Silver Age, on the YouTube channel. We'll probably say this a bunch of times because that's where all the world's coverage is going to be. There's a playlist, uh, Worlds 2022, uh, so that is where you can find all of our videos. It's going to end up being probably 30, 40 videos. Maybe there's already 18 videos in there right now. So literally, we covered so much stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We're putting a lot of work into that still. Um, just finding the time to really go through all of it. Like when I got home, the first thing I did was just label clips. And uh, I want to say it was like north of like 250, 300 videos roughly recorded. So just Ooh. sorting all of that out has been, you know, a task of its own. But trust me, we're working on getting more out to you guys. And it's going to be really cool stuff. Uh, to kind of end it off, there were some modern age qualifiers happening, some grinders, if you would, that night. So this year's modern was a little different. Anyone that had 25 WKO points or instantly got a buy round in two worlds, then I believe if you just showed up, you were just qualified, right? Like you just, anyone, yeah, there was no, anyone could play in worlds. You didn't technically have to be qualified. Instead of qualifying, the qualifi qualification just became a first round buy. Yeah. Right. So I think. Talked with Anthony Barnstable, uh, the judge, one of the main judges at the event here, uh, about a lot of round one buys and a lot about the uh, qualifiers themselves, about how few people were in qualifiers. What would we get the numbers up? What would we have to do? And it's tough because, you know, I'd only played in grinders once. Those were different than qualifiers. These qualifiers were being run like a tournament and the winner at the end of the tournament won versus a, well, I don't even know. Grinder was like whoever... Uh, was you literally just played like three rounds, but if you got beat out, say, it was wasn't it like a nation, right? Like a round robin tournament with like just four people? Uh, no, because the grinder was like in a single elim, a constant single elimination oh, thing. With it was like three like rounds 16. overall. I don't know. They it was like yeah, they did have quite a few people for like only having I think two. They did have quite a few people in both of them, uh, and by yeah. quite a few, I don't mean like was there 15, 16 yeah, people. It was about yeah. average. It was pretty small, but it was like quite a few when you don't actually need it to uh, participate, I guess. Right, and that kind of became the interesting thing. We'll get more into this when we talk about worlds, but there was 168 players. 108 had a first round buy uh, out of the 168. And then top 32, 29 players had a buy in the first round. People didn't have a buy. Um so I think we'll get into it more, but there, there's definitely, I think, would be a more importance or when it comes to a qualifier. I think if you didn't have the buy, you really should have went and tried to freaking get one because it was ended up being huge later on. That was also yeah, just the buys. For... The buys were worth 300 points too. Right. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. In that a low scoring meta right now, because even not to talk too much about 300 modern, but uh, Emily Rowett 
she got uh you know from canada the queen of the north love her i got like 140 points outside of her 300 point like buy round she got six wins right but they were all incredibly low scoring games where like her end total was like maybe 500 points i think something like that maybe 100 it was, 400 it was something. 540 540 yeah, out of her other games, she had 140 points. Or sorry, 240 points. Yeah, she only gave other up five 60, games that day. 60 points um, in all of Swiss. Which is incredible. But it's That's like, so man, crazy. these are <laughs> low, like incredibly low scoring games. Like no wipes. Learned about a lot about people not wiping this weekend. And it's just crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that was Thursday. Thursday was cool. It was a good kickoff day. Um, going into Friday... I think it was teams build. Simeon, you walked around. Simeon and I both walked around and talked to a lot of people how they were feeling about teams. This was the first time with a brick, you know, as opposed to six boosters, you know, two for each person. Each team got an entire brick. Obviously, that made it cost a little bit more. We were pretty happy. We sponsored our team, the Chainsaw Chad. So that's Tristan, Grant, Alex uh, from the Rainbow Sioux Falls area. So really cool for them to be our team. That was fun. If you want to see, there's already a lot of Team Worlds videos up right now and probably more by the time this gets out who knows will be, there will be definitely more by the time this episode is out dope 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 so how are you guys think obviously we weren't going to play in team worlds would have been really fun but how are you guys feeling about team worlds being a brick as opposed to just boosters like normal yeah. i thought it was a i thought it was an excellent change i know when i was walking around with you guys uh one of the questions we were asking was how do you guys feel about this and i think only one team responded negatively to it i think everybody else was very happy with the bricks uh i'd say the only complaint with getting a brick was it made it a lot harder to like build teams in i believe they were only given a 15 minute window yeah i want to say it was right around there but I, so, I think it was longer. time extensions for that. But other than that, everyone seemed to like it. I think it was longer than 15, but that is what they stated. Um, yeah, we got we got some footage of them passing out the bricks and stuff like that. Um, one of the main reasons I like the brick idea instead of the six boosters is because it doesn't allow for any of those weird interim like packs where you get like the last four from one brick and the first two from another. And potentially get like the double Red Skull like team, you know, uh, to like throw back to 2019 Nationals. Um, but yeah, it's so like the similar thing to that happened with the slop kits where uh, when they're passing out boosters, eventually they get to the end of the brick and like another table gets two of the last ones and then a couple from the next one kind of thing so i really like that it's not split i like that brick distribution is normally not always but normally pretty good um i know we've built out of bricks before making like random teams and stuff uh i think it gives you just a really solid opportunity especially with solid sub themes in certain sets just gives you so much more to actually make you know two theme teams and one like just good junk leftover team or you know, three theme teams or, you know, like whatever you want to do, however you want to build. Obviously, it depends a little bit on what you pull, but this set had some pretty strong rares and stuff. So yeah, getting more of those than, you know, there's like, it's either you pull like two bad super rares that aren't going to really be effective stuff, or you also just get, you know, seven rares, which in my opinion is stronger and sealed usually, but yeah. In that format, yeah, um, you know, there was a lot of talk prior to the Team Worlds just talking about keywords you can work with, and I would say probably the two most prominent just across the board was definitely X-Men, big surprise there, and then a ton of robot teams, a lot, a lot of robot teams, and yeah, I mean, making themes with the brick was definitely much, much easier, and I think, you know, just generally people like to build theme, so... Yeah, I'm all for the brick change. I would have loved to play in this event. This is definitely the one I wanted to play in the most. So it was still a ton of fun to cover and just, yeah, really see the the changes at work because I think overall very beneficial and definitely left a lot less like room for, you know, what Simeon had said, the, the double chase Red Skull instances. So, yeah, big fan of the change. All right. And 
That was probably my favorite thing about the entire weekend was that we weren't playing. You know, WizKids had us officially there for media coverage. I got way more invested into every tournament than I ever would have. And I'll say the same for Modern, but like if we were been doing teams, unless we would have made top 16 or something and would have kept playing, we would have like gotten beaten out. And we'd be like, all right, well, cool, cool. And then went and go played like BRs or the X-Men slop, right? With this, yeah. instead of like being just like, oh, got beat out, bummed out, whatever, go do whatever. It's now it's like, all right, boom, this was top six and we're instantly talking to people as soon as they lost or won a game. That was super awesome seeing those like raw, some people very emotional, some people not as emotional being like, ah, oh, well, you know, that's how it goes. You no, know, one of the craziest interviews we did was with the four points gaming. And then also I would say with the Matty G, George Massu and Adam Friedman team, I don't know what they call themselves, Robemeisters. That's what it was. Um, those were also really fun interviews. And just watching the uh, watching top 16 go the way it went, it was pretty crazy. It came down to two teams here. It was one, a Phoenix Nest team, but it had Lucas and Kevin on it. Where I was like, yeah, South Dakota boys, let's go. And it had Joe. Joe's just awesome. So, like, that was a pretty easy route for. And then the other team was a clicks off team with uh, Azra Strife, TJ, and Bruno, Anthony Bruno from Coffee and Clicks. The team is We Don't Talk About Bruno and... Right as that was happening, we had to start getting set up for the fan appreciations. We could film that and have a high quality fan appreciation to show you guys here soon. They're just kind of junky, junky photos that aren't that great that we always kind of get from fan appreciation. Like that'll be coming up here soon, which is going to be really awesome. We weren't able to get interviews with the winning and losing teams of the finals. Uh, We don't talk about Bruno team did win. We will have a pretty fun video with all these interviews. Coming up soon, like I said, they're really cool, really fun. We asked them simple questions. Who was your team's MVP? You know, what happened out there? Like, where did the loss come from? Where did the win come from? Et cetera, et cetera. It was, it was really, like, most fun game. Kept the interviews pretty fun for teams, so it was, it was awesome. And then we showed off the fan appreciation. We were able to officially video the fan appreciation guys. We want to talk much about that, knowing that we have a... We can do a little bit of a teaser. Yeah. Uh, we do have a, a podcast thing. coming up. Yeah, so after the fan appreciation, uh, well, prior to the fan appreciation, um, Scott had said something along the lines of, I think you guys are really going to want to like, have a talk with me, like do like an interview with me after the fan appreciation, which really perked like all of our ears for sure. Um, but yeah, we, we have a, uh, you know somewhat live ish it was live like recorded live while games were happening so the audio quality was a little bit low but we have an interview with scott where he goes into the fan appreciation way more than just what the slideshow was and also he drops i'll say a like one very big bomb in my opinion um about like an upcoming change to like a fairly uh core element of hero click stuff i don't want to i don't want to sound too whatever clickbaity about it but i almost also not going to give it away not without like all the context um but yeah they you know they showed off some stuff that we had already seen and then they also showed off some like the newer stuff uh, especially the iconics the iconics uh there's there it looks like they're doing like a full death of superman run for iconics they've got superman vs doomsday they've got the uh the supermen like the guys that come in and fill in for superman um and then yeah they've got the back in black superman or whatever you call them so yeah without going into any other detail we do go over all of it quite extensively and and more. Yeah, you guys were were talking with Scott for a while. Like I kept walking back to the booth. I'm like, dang, okay. Like it just kept going. So um, I myself have still not fully heard it. So I will be on the edge of my seat waiting to hear it as well. <laughs> and, but yeah, really was, exciting uh, stuff. That was Friday leading into leading into Saturday. I will say, and then we. Oh yeah, we had cookout. I. I to cook out. I think we had to cook out like twice in one day. That was all right. It was awesome. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> Two days. Yeah. yeah. Like, so if you guys don't know what cookout is, uh, listeners, it's this place where you can get a crazy variety of food in decently sized portions for like super cheap. You know, like they're not anything huge, but like, you know, like five, four or five chicken nuggets, two bucks, throw that on there. Some mini quesadillas, two bucks, throw it on there. Um, chicken sandwich, whatever insanely cheap so like all four of us ate 
like thirty dollars, and we had plenty of food. You know, between each getting a sandwich, some sides, I may or may not have gotten a shake or two uh, at this point in the trip. It was pretty great. Um, but yeah, cookout. Seriously, if you live in the South, you already know kind of what cookout. I believe it's like a Southern thing, though. A I've never seen them up here, anyways. Gotta be more of a Southern thing. I've only ever seen them in like Carolinas and then here in Tennessee. So I strongly urge people. It was only a mile away from the Graceland Convention Center. Go to Cookout next time you go to Worlds, or if you have one near you, go. If you've never been, it's awesome. It's seriously so good. Um, but yeah. So leading into Saturday, hot Saturday, bright and early, after some uh, sp- shenanigans at the hotel. Uh, Brad Broyles was being quite the supplier. Won't get into that too much, but it is it is a big fun part of Worlds. Yeah, that a lot of people hang out at the hotel. Once Scott, it's had, over. yeah, Scott had brought this up, but like uh, any other event that you go to, any other like WizKids event, um, there isn't like the one. I mean, I guess uh, New Mark's event is slightly different because he does have like a right. room block. Normally, there's not like a specific hotel that is like a, tied to the event, um, but Graceland is really awesome because. Uh, the convention center is within, you know, three blocks walking distance of the hotel. And so a lot of people stay at that hotel. So after like a long day of hero clicks, you can go back to the hotel, hang out in the lobby, grab a drink with like somebody, uh, just like chat about like whatever, you know, uh, gives you a really cool chance to like pick people's brains and just get different opinions, you know, meet people that maybe you didn't have time to like run into them, especially we had I want to say like we had plenty of time to talk to people because that's what we were there to do. We were there to like interview and record and stuff. So we were just like walking around all day, but people in the actual tournament don't really get a chance. You know, you're waiting for seatings, you're moving your stuff, you're getting your game set up. You're doing that for like three days. But then at night you go back to the hotel and you get to unwind and talk to people and stuff. And yeah, it's one of the cooler aspects of Graceland. Also, Graceland has uh, their famous chocolate milk as well. <laughs> and... I need to get that video to you, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember. I think her name's Miss Anna. I believe so, the, like, yeah. Sweet little old lady that uh, was handing out the PB, PB&J and chocolate milk every night, yeah. Yeah, and that... Um, <laughs> sorry to clickbait again, but you'll have to check this video out as well. The chocolate milk, it... Makes you do a certain something, according to Miss Anna, and uh, it was uh, it was a surprise, that's for sure. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, the Graceland Hotel, what a cool venue! So cool to see everybody just back there hanging out every single night. We were going there, you know, at least for a few hours, just chatting with all the players. And yeah, like Simeon's saying, they finally have some time to just you know loosen up, chat a bit. So it was so cool meeting everybody. Uh, man, it was it was so much fun. And yeah, the venue is, it's just incredible. Like, oh my gosh, that hotel was so nice. So yeah, really, really fun. Uh, so yeah, Saturday, the big events, the Euroclix Worlds Championship. It was a hectic morning, people getting build yeah. sheets, getting their teams ready. Uh, I was trying to stay as many pictures as possible of build sheets. Uh, it is shared on the Dial H Facebook page, but I believe Every team but like eight or something, thanks to my efforts, Emily's efforts, Brad's efforts, uh, and Dylan's, Dylan Disney here, posted and compiled all this awesome data. We had asked a ton of people the whole weekend, like what they thought was going to be the most played. Didn't actually super delve into these. I don't really know what was the most played figure, honestly. Oh, it was Um, actually, so we kept saying uh, Scarry and Iron Man. Iron Man, yeah. Um, Yeah, according to their data, what they found the most played um gosh it was actually surprising i think it was like sky tyrant was the most played um i'll have to try and find it here real quick because yeah it actually it ended up surprising me uh by being like a uh like not something that like was even in the list of things that i thought was going to be top like no one i don't don't think think a single person said that if it is sky tyrant I don't think anyone said Sky Tyrant, who we talked to. No, which is wild. Just, it kind of like flew under the radar. Um, <laughs> flew <laughs> under the radar. Uh, no, uh, it really was. Let me get it pulled up. But it really was like a surprise to me, at least, because um, I thought for sure Sakari and Iron Man fit on way more teams and stuff. But 
here it is let's see but uh, yeah big shout out to dylan disney for getting all this figured out and put into these really nice pie charts too that are easy on the eyes to check out and look at so seriously huge props to for him to compile all of that data literally insane love that you did it man it's super awesome people love that stuff okay figures appearing Great. on x percent of teams no duplicates uh we had apocalypse at 5.9 percent scarab at 7.1 percent mad jim at 8.3 i think it was mad jim then uh yeah mad jim at 8.3 and then sicarian iron man was only at three percent sky tyrant was wow. five and this is the whole field right this, this isn't is, just uh, yeah this is not just uh this is everyone's team that we that wow. we found so far molecule man 5.9 pretty high up there mm-hmm. venom yeah, also 5.9 um yeah we, i did not think that the majority of uh like prime slots well not necessarily the majority but um uh, enough people's prime slots were being used for mad gym that it tipped the scale quite a bit because yeah, then uh, this also goes into sideline breakdowns and stuff like that. Really, like, just a ton of info here. Um, but, yeah, top 32 sideline objects and whatever else. Um, mm. Venom Magneto cracking, like, towards the top with 2.3. Scroll Spy at 7.5. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Big showing from Scroll Spy. Kind of, there. that was the Isaac Denke pick. Where yeah, we Scroll didn't Spy think about it. We were like, oh, yeah. Was on sure. more sidelines than Destroyer. Because, I mean, he goes on any sideline, regardless yeah, of prime. Sure. But, yeah, Destroyer was 6.1. Um, beating out Scroll Spy, though, was Sentinel. So Interesting. Very <laughs> strange to me. I think I pick Scroll Spy over Sentinel most of the time, but, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. That's but Saturday funny. was, uh, yeah, Saturday was crazy. I'd say, I think that was the day we got there the earliest, if I'm not mistaken, just because, yeah, we were ready to go for Modern. And, uh... Yeah, just running around, getting people's build sheets, the lines to get registered, everything like that. Like, it looked like TSA, practically. There were so many lines of people just feeding through, like, the main event hall. Then when people are coming in to get seated, I'm just running around going, hey, you want to do a quick interview? Hey, you want to do an interview? You know, getting any kind of information I could. So there's a ton more player interviews, like, specifically for Modern to come here. And I want to say it was, like, in total. Like, I think I spoke with, like, 35 or 40 people so that was so much fun to once again get to meet everybody there and to just kind of talk about why they're playing what they're playing you know what are they scared of what are they expecting to see so that was a ton of fun to get that inside look with everybody oh dude and you yeah you talked to a ton of people those are all i believe up on youtube right now all the modern age interviews oh no no they are not oh no oh there's a (laughs) a lot a lot more three videos of them though so we have a solid yeah. amount of videos of prominent players and all sorts of players from every level i uh, gave some interviews and gave their input about how their thoughts and feelings were going into modern age so like that's really really cool um let's kind of talk about tarot cards a little bit in the sense that for the first aspect checking them for team builds went they were Judges, I mean, were super cracking down on basically anyone with tarot cards, which was basically the entire field, as they wanted to make sure there was no cheating, no shenanigans were happening yeah. afoot. Um, they were essentially so, laying the tarot card down in front of themselves, and if they could see, like, you know, bending it a little bit, like, twisting, not bending, but, like, uh, rotating it a little bit to let the light hit it, and if you could see, with a sleeve on it, if you could see, like, any kind of indentation or, like, Something that would have been obvious enough where if it's sitting in front of you while playing, um, yeah, you were swapping that out. Yeah, they were definitely very strict about that. Um, I think that is probably what took the longest for verification was just going through each individual tarot card, re-sleeving them if necessary. Um, I can't remember, did they have like a a sleeve that you had to use? They They were providing sleeves. Yes, okay didn't have to use theirs but if they found that your sleeve itself was damaged they did make you if it was a different type replace all your sleeves so there's no differentiating tarot cards based on the sleeve with their sleeve i think it's it's good they supplied their own which is awesome yeah yeah um a zero percent like transparent whatever you would call that um back on like a sleeve would like fix all 
all issues with that as long as the sleeve itself's not damaged at that point um problem is like most card company like most collectible card games don't come in tarot size so there is like a limited amount of tarot sleeves that you can like order as far as uh customizable stuff but yeah they were also allowing you to proxy your entire tarot deck um i think you still had to confirm that you had the cards but if there was some that were damaged they'd let you swap them all out for like proxies that they made which better than just completely saying no deck for you kind of thing definitely but uh there were some complaints about like registration time and i mean there were people saying they were waiting in line for like hour and a half two hours at some points and yeah. You know, I understand that obviously you don't want to wait that long, but the fact that they went this far to like assure like integrity in the game, I really appreciate that. I think that's really cool. I know people had a lot of questions about tarot card legality and, you know, everything we're covering here, and I'm glad they took that extra step to make sure that, you know, no one's no one's being scummy with them, no one's, you know, marking their cards or anything. So I'm glad that they verified everything. I thought that was really cool of WizKids to take the time to do that. A lot of the wait time was also just on um, the internet service. Like between registering people and taking payments, that's a large portion of why they didn't have the con sale booth open while registration was happening or like before, you know, before things kicked off is because every time they'd try to do that, it would basically uh, drag the internet service down and, kick them out and stuff and so just to get people through line they could only run so many whatever systems things um and so yeah that really bogged it down i know when we were first trying to stream there was a few times where the internet just like went out completely like for yeah. five minutes or more at a time and so yeah hopefully uh we get like an op an opportunity to talk to the venue next year and we're not cramming so much stuff on like one on on one network. Hopefully we can get a like a separate network for other stuff because yeah, there was a lot a lot happening on that network. Definitely. And you know, if if hardwire is an option, hardwire internet would be fantastic. Unfortunately, it was not this time around. We looked into that because we really wanted to live stream that whole time. And so we did what we could with like the Facebook stuff. But uh, yeah, as a whole, definitely fell short of where we wanted to be. But, you know, as Simeon said, called an audible, ran with what we had, and we still got, I think, some great videos. So yeah, I mean, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but we definitely were able to roll with the punches quite well. Um, I would say so. Yeah, and, and then going too. in with like modern too. I mean, the day just continued. It was definitely, I would say, like the highest stress day for players. You could really Easily. see that people came to play, and that was really cool. Uh, just going around and talking with everybody beforehand, I think, was probably like my personal highlight for the weekend. Absolutely loved doing that, and. Man, just going throughout the day, you know, getting to that top cut. Uh, I'll kind of let Calder take over here. But, uh, like, when we got to top 32, you remember how quiet it was, right, Calder? It was just, oh, just crazy. You're a pin drop. It was the uh, the atmosphere was absolutely insane. Everybody just a hush fell over the crowd. It was just, you know, it was only those top tables that were talking literally at all in the entire hall. It was absolutely insane. And people were playing in their best. Just the... The most heavily concentrated games people were playing their butts off it was insane to just go around the tables to see what was happening to see the frustration to see the uh wishing they had five more minutes two more minutes another action you know it was crazy seeing all of this i i loved the coverage we did for modern that day walking around to the tables looking at everybody's builds there's some fun interactions we follow jason alvey with his triple apoc build which is really cool um, we, Scott Crampton, uh, maybe a little too much time in front of the mic. Yeah, maybe, um, maybe a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be a little extra there. Um, we remind him about what he actually did end up playing. Uh, he seems to have forgot, um, which is kind of funny. And we, there's some great times. Um, it was really cool. Uh, 
out that day, I was dressed as Captain America in uh, John Walker cap suit. That was really fun. We got some great pictures. So shout out to David Newmark uh, for being our cameraman for a little while and taking a picture of the crew. That was really fun. Uh, top 32 was just, oh man, it was just icy that day. And when the cut finally happened and they uh, you know took everybody's picture and everything, pretty sweet. But there was a breakdown of like teams that ended up going into it. I believe it was at nine... And Apocalypses or nine Thanos's Simeon. It, it, there were more Apocalypse teams than more Thanos's. Apocalypse's. So yeah, I, nine, I think it was nine, nine seven. Apox. So yeah, nine Apox, seven Thanos's, which is wild. And then it, after that, it was like four or five good stuff is good teams where it's like, you know, random non theme stuff. There was like two, two X Men, two Fantastic yeah. Four. Yeah. Maybe one Like monster. the Fantastic Four is making a, a good, strong showing far removed from the F4 set. Obviously, it's all still legal, and they literally only have more options now. But, oh. like, F4 swap hasn't been the biggest thing, um, you know? One Latveria really cool. theme. Yeah. That was that was kind right. of surprising. Like, people kind of forgot that Latveria is still a really strong team with the uh, the keyword cheating stuff, so... And yeah, and it was a Latveria uh, theme that didn't have, uh, like, Sky Tyrant on it, which, I mean, personally, when I, when I look at Latveria, that's, like, one of the first figures I think of. It was a it was an interesting build. I believe it was Double Flash, uh, the Shifting Doom, obviously, uh, Mad Jim, the Common Franklin from Future Foundations, and then ah oh, gosh, I can't remember what else was on it. But it was piloted by George Masu, who you know is an incredible player. He did very well, and it was definitely I definitely found myself walking by his table, checking out his matches. Oh, Molecule Man was also on the team, of course. So yeah, it was a it was an offbeat Latveria build that ended up doing very well, and I think definitely threw a wrench at a lot of people because I mean, a lot of good figures on that team, but definitely not in like um, you know, in a standard build. So, yeah. uh, very an cool. animal theme with double lockjaw, triple maggot, triple oh, yeah. maggot. Which wow, <laughs> oh so yeah. never seen a triple maggot um, animal build. Like I know that like people have played it. I've never personally gone against one or seen one played um but yeah was, there's uh, I mean, very diverse field though yeah guys, this is pre top 32 just overall what was your team that you had seen that day where you were like oh wow just your most unique or team that caught your eye or something that caught you off guard uh, that you had seen the 300 <laughs> modern most unique. I, uh yeah you go ahead okay there was some guy who was playing double Airwalker yeah, legacy. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, dude, that oh, was so my. wild. Um, now Airwalker's cool and all. Uh, when you kill him, he goes back to click one. So he effectively has what eighteen? Yeah, he's got eighteen clicks of life, but he is one hundred twenty-five points with just like Very eleven for three hypersonic, like a seventeen super senses, and then it goes down to a sixteen and down to a fifteen. So. I didn't really notice if he maybe had some heavy defend or what else was on there. It is a cosmic energy piece, I guess. So unoutwittable 17 super senses. But um, it's kind of being played the whole uh, Airwalker, just that it's got 18 clicks of life and you yeah. have to chew through. I mean, at, at the end of it, yeah, two of them. So it's so fun. <laughs> it's just, you know, 36 clicks of life. How are you going to chew through it? Um, Very interesting. So, like, that was a cool team. There was another guy that I really liked. He had an Agatha, Richter, Erlin, what else? Doctor Strange, Venom, then some other. But the, and once you looked at the team, you're like, oh my gosh, this is almost just a style points team because they all have flowing cloaks, something, and like an effect coming out of their hands, like Merlin does, like Doctor Strange does, like Agatha does, like Richter does. I was like, oh, wow. This is just like a really aesthetically pleasing team. It's another like interesting wild pick that I saw that day. Uh, Ian, what about you for just a an out there team that caught you off guard? So one of the tables I walked by, I saw someone playing nine common Lokis from War of the Realms. I was mm. really digging that. That's cool. That did well in nationals. You know, I I don't know how well it holds up today. Uh, I'm not sure how well he ended up doing. It was at one of the lower tables, so you know. But I I would say. Maybe not like the most surprising team itself, but the most surprising showing of a team. The amount of Secret Six I saw at World, yeah. I was uh, 
I don't know. I in a way I was like kind of happy that it was back, which I can't believe I'm saying that after the whole community said the sky is falling, you know, when <laughs> when it released, but seeing uh seeing people use the secret six to counter things like Thanos and Apocalypse, I thought was very interesting. And that is very much like, you know, the team has no barrier on it. So if you don't go first with Secret Six, they can just get blown out of the water. So very high risk, high reward team. It's a very and seeing it make too. top thirty two, very cool. Yeah, and like a heavy Thanos apocalypse meta. Uh, it was a very smart play having yeah. the, you know, the team that can get rid of their protected stuff with you know seven outwits or whatever can target them from across the map. Can you know come and like take out support pieces really easily. Um, just a very smart play in like the current meta. Uh, my you have Jim Jasper's super represented as well, so you know Scarab just gets that much more value. And there was one cool interaction there uh, that we had with Joe, where he ended up playing against the Secret Six team, and he just said on a Jim Jasper's build, and he's playing just non-theme good stuff with objects as well. He's like, I threw my objects off to the side. I didn't equip anything. I didn't start anybody. Like he had a Wonder Woman on his team that could start with a lasso. Didn't start Wonder Woman with lasso. Literally just went like bare bones and won the match against Secret Six. Just some next level playing right there. That was That's really cool. cool. Yeah, you have to throw your whole your whole whole normal uh, plan out the window. Uh, yeah, I think my favorite team, just in like the the beauty and simplicity of it, was. A single God Emperor Doom. At 300 <laughs> oh, yeah. No sideline, uh, no tarot cards, just God Emperor Doom and the Latveria map that he gets to, like, since he has the keyword, he gets to, I think, play it for free, obviously. Um, he went two and one. And so, like, it, uh, that was Dwayne. I can't remember his last name off the top of my head. But uh, he went two and one. And it was, like, super impressive to me that he went two and one, to be honest. Oh, not. I said Dwayne. It's just Dane. Dane, uh, yeah. No W. Yeah. Just Dane. Uh, but he's a local in Memphis. He said he judges. I can't remember what the venue that he said was. But he had like um, a like quick emergency that he had to attend to. So he ended up having to drop. But I was super impressed that it went two and one. Um, also, just not like a not a like team that i really thought would do crazy but you know he was winning he won one game with just like a five point object smash that he got uh like obviously like barrier would be a problem for doom but you know two and one pretty solid and uh i would have really liked to have seen like how far it was gonna go it was like a team i was really ready to see like or like listen to uh what the latest standing it was in was yeah definitely <laughs> Glad it happened. It was sure. awesome. Like, and we had just been a ton of talk on our Dial H Discord, which you can join if you become a $5 or above Patreon member at patreon.com slash Dial H or Heroclix. <clears throat> um, we were doing a ton of talk about how, like, there's an HC Realms thread of saying, like, oh, this Doom's like, terrible or this Doom couldn't beat. It was Doom was versus it? the Annihilation? Annihilation Grand Prize. Grand Prize, that's what it was. Yeah. So both uh, who beats who? points, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That was so interesting. Like that was just a fun, and we're like, man, maybe he played. Maybe the person that made that thread just wanted to learn how to like either <laughs> fully counter Doom or fully like use Doom to his highest potential and just get everybody's input. <laughs> there was like so funny to see like someone playing just Doom at three hundred in World. So it was awesome. But yeah, and then later, I think you did some Dice Masters coverage, Simeon. You were the little hero. Yeah, <laughs> and so you over at Dice I originally Masters went over to the Dice Masters tables just to get um, like B roll footage and like highlight real stuff, uh, but they were like, "Oh, are you gonna like stream the game?" And I was like, "I mean, the camera's already set where I could like record it. Like, obviously not gonna stream it, but uh, I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, like I'll I'll do it.' I made some promises I couldn't keep because I was uh, I was just busy oh, no. doing other stuff, so I was like, "Yeah, I'll definitely record." I got the the finals match in their nationals, which was Saturday. No, that was Friday. Um, that was Friday. Yeah, yeah. Friday was nationals. Saturday was team. Yeah, World. Saturday was worlds, and I was like, I'll definitely get like the top eight of worlds. Well, I started recording that. I got the top eight, like one of the top eight matches, um, and then we started our interview with Scott, and <laughs> I kind of completely forgot about. Uh, recording the rest of the matches so i i could have just left my phone in there and recorded um but yeah i was 
I think they just appreciated that I covered anything at all, to be honest. So, yeah, that's pretty fair. And, and I know we've already mentioned it once, but I really cannot wait for you guys to listen to our talk with Scott and how he goes into the brain rules and object rules and all this really cool stuff. Really so awesome. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, let's jump into Sunday. I don't think anything crazy happened Saturday night, so I think we can go ahead and jump into Sunday. Sunday was so... Again, it starts to clear out a lot on Sunday. People that didn't make cut, maybe not, don't want to stick around for BRs, decide that they're just going to go home and begin that drive. We started the top 16 cut on Sunday. Had a lot of Battle Royale footage. Um, with a lot of people. We did. I guess we didn't mention this on Saturday. We did a ton of fun live streams on Facebook. And if you guys haven't checked these out, if you're either at the events or weren't paying attention on Facebook or whatever, for any reason, come out. We go around and we do some HeroClix trivia. Uh, the people at WizKids were so nice to give us like a huge stack of Ten of Swords legacy cards and some influence rings to give away to people for whatever reason. And we go around. First, we're doing like generic HeroClix trivia, like what is the Chase Sima Wonder Woman, blah, 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 stuff like that. And then we did, now this one was really fun. We would ask someone what their favorite HeroClix figure is and why. While they were telling us this, Simeon would look up on his phone a picture of that figure sculpt. Then to win the prize, they had to do the pose. They had to recreate the pose of the sculpt of the figure. That was really fun. Um, there were some players that were a little <laughs> uh, Wild Water West in it. Um, yeah, but besides... Recreating the Triple H pose. Yeah, recreating the Triple H pose uh, into my face is is one way to do it. Um, interesting. And we had like a ton of fun. I think people really enjoyed that. That might honestly just be a future video series we do because it was literally so fun to go yeah. around and do that at Worlds. Um, we kind of really had some liked... chat input too. I think this one's recorded, so I don't. I'm pretty sure we didn't do this one live. But uh, the offering people to drop, we waited till like round three or four. When people like you know it's around noon time. If you didn't bring food, then you're getting pretty hungry. We were offering oh, people yeah, a it's... full pizza if they dropped right then. We had no <laughs> takers, but I, I thought that was like pretty fun. Um, that was like... awesome. I had a blast doing that. Like asking someone like, "So what's your uh, score so far?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm I'm zero and 3 I'm like, "Well, well, well, we have an offer for you." <laughs> No takers, but definitely some folks who were tempted. Oh, they yeah. were. And we had some people walk up to us later, and they're like, yeah, I should have. I should have took that pizza. Like, yeah, you should have. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Well, the problem was, uh, had they dropped, they also lose the participation prizing. Yes. Uh, so next year, we'll were... have to amp it up a little bit to cover. Like... Well, and to clarify on that, the participation prize, it wasn't pizza. No. Yeah, big thing. Hey, it pizza. wasn't a pizza actually one all for yourself so, that was just so such like good wacky fun i think added some levity to like the day and just people could be more relaxed you know not as stressed at 300 modern 300 modern stressful it is um yeah going into sunday again what i said about team worlds rings true in a normal year at worlds i would have maybe gotten like maybe top 32 you know and maybe gotten beat out and I would probably just not be interested in 300 Modern and go play BRs or something, right? Like, I just wouldn't care. But because we were doing the video coverage, we were just like, I was so invested. I mean, Simeon and Ian obviously were too, just about who is going to win this year. Seeing Isaac do really well. Seeing Triple APOC, like, continually, like, keep going. And, you know, we see, like, Saul and everybody, like, all these people, who, like, some people, like, we've never seen before. And we're like, man, they're still in it. That's so cool. Um, So going into this like top 16 again is the same thing hush falls over the crowd it's very very serious games very tight very uh like concentrated we're talking with people as soon as they do it um emily versus caleb reddick that was a wild game that's going to be a fun interview when you guys get to see that that one's really cool um caleb taking in the w there on a mirror match uh caleb versus scott crampton i believe next and then like yes. lost there um seeing one of the coolest things really was seeing uh Isaac Arnold Berkowitz just meticulously take apart a Thanos or an apocalypse team. Like a clock. Oh my yeah. yeah. Was awesome. Yeah. Multiple times during that weekend. It was it was crazy. Like I'd walk by tables for, you know, thirty seconds, a minute. And when I walked by, this happened I think three times, two, three times at least. 
I just walked by the table Isaac was playing at, and then I would see an apocalypse get their dial spun. And I was like, well, I thought that that was not possible. So that was just, like, crazy. Just, yeah, like Calder said, just picking them apart. Wild. Yeah, it's like, I I don't know how to describe it, but it would be, like, uh, similar to, like, someone playing a 300 modern competitive team against a person that just, like, bought, like, a, a starter set of figures it was like the same level of difficulty or like looked like the same level of difficulty where Isaac just like had a perfect plan that worked over and over and over again. Like it literally looked like uh, his figures were just point costed differently or something, you know, just built <laughs> different. Yeah, <laughs> built different. I think, I think we've all had these moments where like either in sealed or in some constructed event, like one week we play a figure and it just does terribly for us. And then maybe a week or two later, someone else is playing that figure. And it's like, man, how come it's impossible for me to take down your, you know, apocalypse? But everybody was tearing mine apart. You know, I know I've had moments like that in my hero career where like it felt like, man, how come your Batman seems to have like eight more clicks than mine did last week? It was the same figure. What the heck, man? Um, so how it looked like when Isaac was playing, it was absolutely insane. Another cool highlight of top 16, and this is a uh, top eight, yeah, top eight, a oh, top four, uh, Saul versus Jason Alvey. Jason had been and very good, very lucky, especially on one of his wins was a roll off, a zero zero roll off. And day. the roll off itself was <laughs> seven to six. Yeah. So Jason had been getting crazy lucky, right? And I, I will say lucky, especially in that moment, but also just doing well with his triple APOC team and Saul, like, it's right up in his face, drops Scarlet Witch. Um, the nickname for her, I, I won't say on this show. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. You can watch the interview with him on our YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and just takes out an apocalypse, like turn two. It's like, oh, yeah. my. The way and... he did it, too, using the angler in like <sighs> a high competitive like cool. way, just a... Uh... I don't know if anybody had expected to see the angler, but it's like... The angler has one very specific use, and Mad Jim being on your team means that after that use is done, you can go to a like more useful object, which is awesome, and it makes the angler just something I hadn't even considered would be breaking like the breaking the mold kind of thing, and it really worked on that Scarlet Witch team. So really quick, yeah. guys, what the angler lets you do is it gives you phasing with a speed value of ten. No one was using it really ever. Um, but it is free if this character is adjacent to an object, a printed wall, or a printed square of blocking terrain. Place them in another square within six squares in line of fire that is adjacent to an object, a printed wall, or a square of blocking terrain. Really cool. Mini value corner. He angle man with the angler is only a buck fifty on coolstuffinc.com. You get five percent off using code dial five. There's your value corner this week. Uh, he's dummy cheap. Buck fifty for angle man and the angler is also hilarious to play. I have six. When I want to play six on a team, um, it's funny and it's hilarious. Yeah, he is really fun. Oh, uh, he's great. Oh, he he was on. A, I guess my top ten of last year. I didn't realize that. Um, <laughs> I guess he deserves it because his equipment was on the winning build. Uh, but yeah, so when it finally got down to just Isaac versus Saul, and you know, Dark Horse pick when this guy who he had never really met or seen before, especially doing this crazy well in three hundred modern. Say- I've seen toxic also, clicks in like the top tables a few times, yeah. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen them in the top four. I want to say like they definitely have made it to the top sixteen, maybe even the top eight. Sure. But yeah, it was a wild run, and that just made us all so much more invested because you know. And, and I'll be honest, I was like, you know, I want him to win because it'd be so awesome for a international champion to win world. Someone not from America that that's just so cool. And, you know, podcast listeners, you know me, I'm patriotic as it gets, but uh, it's just neat. It's way cooler this way. It's like a way more interesting uh, story of hero clicks to finally have a uh, international champion, someone from Mexico. Be cool. Not American. And even in the, well, like when we all videoed ourselves, we were like, you know, Isaac probably has this, you know, our money is probably going to be on Isaac, but like we want him to win, you know, but we know like Isaac just has this crazy track record. In- insane. That. And that was the craziest game. Like, again, no other time would I've probably ever been invested in who wins worlds. Like this week, doing the video coverage, seeing people's journey to the top table, 
I mean, there was like what 40, 50 people surrounding that table. Yeah, it was dead silent. It was insane. Like, there wow. was a, a really cool moment in that game. I'm not sure if it was entirely captured on the live stream here, but Isaac is setting up for a big, a big strike with his jubilee. So he's got like running shot some pen damage, and then like five or six damage to go along with it from like enhancement and a few other things. And he targets a Felix Faust, a Scarlet Witch, and a Mad Jim Jaspers. And Saul, or Saul, he super senses out of all of them, and I believe one of those rolls was benefited by a tarot card that gave him plus one on a single D6 roll. So everyone, you know, everyone's like, oh my, like breath held, like holy, he just hit all those. Then Isaac follows up with a few more attacks from some maggot pogs. Felix Faust hits super senses two more times. And then on the next attack, Felix Faust finally goes down, and there was this huge, just like, decompression in the room, like, oh, finally. So just insane super senses rolls uh, benefited by Felix Faust there. And it was, it was a crazy moment. Really cool to see everyone like that invested into the game and reacting like that in real time. Like, that was a really, really fun moment. Yeah. Like, as much as a crowd can go wild while being almost completely silent at the same time, we definitely were going to go in wild. People were, like, losing their minds over, like, those back-to-back rolls. Um, one of my favorites was, like, right after that, uh, he rolled for Super Senses again, and he, like, he had a dice cup, so he, like, puts his dice cup down, and he just, like, leaves it there for a second, and Isaac's, like go ahead (laughs) he like that was the one that he missed but like yeah that little interaction they were both extremely good sports uh both played extremely well i did like obviously i like who am i to say if there was any mistakes or like back and forth here but um i think you know both had like some coaching prior to like the game like their match where uh you know isaac had like adam friedman and scott crampton like in his ear telling him you know strategy and like talking like stuff like that and uh yeah Saul had uh I can't remember the his his Oscar. mastermind yeah Oscar, Oscar, the, the, Oscar puppet yeah. Master. the puppet master uh what a that was like such a good interview where they're going over like their strategy for like that specific matchup and stuff and um yeah it's just crazy how it really at some points kind of just came down to dice like it you know obviously um you put things like super senses on knowing it's it's a one third roll, but then you have that tarot card knowing that at some point you're going to get it and have that 50 50 roll instead. And it's like little things like that. Is it luck? Is it strategy? Is it like the correct build, the most correct build you can do? You know, uh, just after a... talking with those guys, I mean, I thought that I thought about hero clicks, you know, I thought I had a, a decent mind for it. After speaking with those guys, it was like, are we even playing the same game? The <laughs> meticulous planning and even like the the prep, like because they, you know, a little spoiler in the interview, they talked about playing either Molecule Man or Felix Faust, who's better. And they ended up falling on Felix Faust because of how much tarot cards benefited him. So many people were playing similar decks where there were there were so many times where single D6 rolls would be benefited by the tarot. And Felix Faust just shines with single D6 rolls. So they ended up going with him over that. So in the argument of luck or skill, especially in terms of team building and prep, these guys did everything and more. And I I don't even know. It was unreal talking to them. It was so cool. Yeah, I It was like um all the memes that JSA clicks that Jay likes to make, the galaxy brain me. So I started talking to the guys. Like my eyes were open. I was like, oh, man, yeah mindset of practice and building going into it was just something i had never heard like in this way before it was pretty incredible i was impressed insanely so again that video our uh interview with saul and oscar is up on our youtube channel it's awesome i highly recommend watching it because it was a uh, same thing it was this sunday it was after we had like all kind of started to get packed up the event you know event was over and just saw him in the hotel room and just wanted to you know talk to him and it was seriously awesome so I was like, get the camera, get the camera. Let's do an interview here. I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And that was so cool. Um, and then we ended up hanging out with those guys for, you know, a few hours afterwards, yeah. just talking, you know, yeah. anything and everything hero clicks. And that was easily another just huge highlight for the trip. It was so much fun meeting those guys. And yeah, just 
them sharing as much as they did on everything they put into it, all the different teams they looked at, the different positioning they had for every single map. It was, yeah, I mean, just so cool to hear about Hero Clicks at that level. That is, you know, it's very rare to get to, uh, to spend that much time talking about it and very much appreciated. Those guys were so much fun. It was just awesome. It was just really awesome. But yeah, that was that was Worlds. That was Memphis, Tennessee. After that, it was you know pretty easy. We stayed the night. We did our uh, returned our monitor on Monday morning, <laughs> so we basically so we did. did the monitor for free uh, the whole weekend, which was great. Um, <laughs> and we rolled rolled on back, and it was a tough getting to Sioux Falls at two a.m. Uh, I did not make the trek back to Kennebec, which would have put me back home at 5 a.m. Stayed stayed the night, then took off. But it was a heck of a time getting back and down there and just an awesome time like spending it there. So, yeah, I hope you guys got a good feel for what Worlds was like for us. I mean, the booth, just having the booth and home base was so cool. Having the banner was so cool. Everybody at WizKids was so awesome to talk to able to get the opportunity that our focus was coverage and videos and all these things that we've been ramping up these past like year to few months just really making quality youtube content for you guys i'm seriously so excited for you guys to see all of these videos because even even once we got back here we realized we're missing some footage or whatever so we did uh we've done some fun stuff uh to the videos there's gonna be some <laughs> fun editing some stuff that i i think everybody's really gonna get a cake out of and enjoy so yeah it's it's really was such a good time. I really don't have enough nice words to say about the people there. All the players were such good sports. It's always a joy to see. I literally could name off countless names. Um, but, you know, if I talk to you, you, you know who you are. Like, we had such a blast. Every conversation, every hero who's player, new, old, you know, from afar, from a distance, wherever they were from. So cool hearing about, you know, from people, how they play clicks catching up with friends again and it was man it was just such a blast i agree yeah um, i think uh yeah it's been way too long since we saw people in 2019 um saw new faces that i'd never seen at worlds or any other events before um a lot of people that like i maybe had seen before but hadn't interacted with until you know i was online with them or whatever and then you know, like brad uh guys from the eagles like i've interacted with like all these people but like finally got to like meet him um saw a bunch of like returning faces which is always awesome uh yeah i think the biggest thing though was like being able to bring coverage in a way that it hadn't been brought before and also just like what we envisioned people at home would want to see like what if if we were stuck at home and couldn't be at worlds what we wanted to do and right uh, i think that like for the most part we really nailed it like uh we didn't get to live stream as much as we wanted but i think you know what we lost in that ability uh we made up for in like future content drops that are going to be higher quality than the live stream would have been to be honest um and yeah you know going forward obviously we hope that like this is going to be a a future thing as well so we'll definitely be pulling the community on like other things they want to see uh but no uh the only way we can really bring the game or build the game is uh by doing stuff like bringing worlds to people at home bringing entertaining content rather than just analytical content and you know just making it fun and uh the world is definitely other than like being like the stressed out top 16 players worlds is like the most fun hero clicks gets i think oh it's yeah really, yes like, awesome and it's literally like and just between the overall Feel of the events, the electricity in the air of people like buzzing, talking to all these people online who you've maybe played with online for the past few years, and, you know, faces to names, names to faces. Battle Royales are literally so fun. Like, maybe my favorite way to play the game. And that whole section is always fun. The idea of doing a slop, you know, during uh, whatever the entire thing, doing all three months, and it also being a Battle Royale type slop is really, really cool. All the side events were great. I guess really quick, just to talk about some of the side events that we didn't mention. Uh, congratulations to Harry Hernandez for winning the Extreme Tarot side event and coming in with a full stack of tarot cards. He listens to the podcast. Uh, we had talked on Facebook and stuff before. It was awesome meeting you and getting to like you know talk yeah. and everything. And four hundred on like point that. ran a yeah. nasty secret six team. It was nasty. 
dude, it was so insanely good. I was like, dang. Uh, I totally thought, like, 400 Modern, I think it does change the game quite a bit. So I was glad to see there's cool teams. I liked someone was playing the, you know, Galactus at, I don't know what point value he was, probably 100, on a herald theme team. That was so cool. Galactus with all the uh, Wonder Woman lanterns. Super fun. Really enjoyed that. And then there was also the, oh yeah, the Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. What a cool side event. Like, I really liked, you know, it was... End of the day, so it was a little tough trying to get to uh, talk to people and see. We have a little bit of footage from that. But a lot of cool teams. You know, someone was rocking my boy, uh, John Walker, Captain America, uh, as his celebrity, I believe, on that team, which was really cool. I kind of, we kind of assumed that with the way it was going to go, that there'd be a lot of Sakarian Iron Man, a lot of Agatha and everything. It was still a really fun side event. I like side events like that, that make you have to fit these weird keyword parameters. And there are ways in Modern to get those all on one team, Spider-Man fam, and, you know, all, all sorts of other fun ways. It was cool. So I super, super enjoyed, like, seeing that side event and all the fun team builds. That's probably, again, my favorite thing. Another favorite thing in HeroClix is building teams, seeing cool, unique team builds. And I saw a ton of cool ones in the uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy events that was so dope you know i think uh another aspect of this trip in terms of like packing up going home you know it's obviously a bit sad like coming off this four day high of just hero clicks uh something crazy is that we get back in the car and nobody's really like burnt out when we're heading home we were discussing just different things we could do you know should we get the opportunity next year we were discussing how can we improve? You know, what do people want to see? Like, if we have more issues next year, like, how can we fix them? Like, we have so much more experience after just this one time now. And, you know, just instantly, like, you know, day one, like, as far as, like, uh, the next event would be, right? Just instantly talking about, like, what more can we do? That's how I knew we were just all in the right place. We were all having such a fun time. And it's already you know, very exciting to be talking about what more we can bring to uh, hopefully grow the game of hero clicks. So I really enjoyed that. I loved that. I, I still wanted to talk about hero clicks even immediately afterwards. That was awesome. Yeah. I, I think our plans of turning Simeon into a human Wi-Fi router. So we always have perfect Wi-Fi no matter where we go. <laughs> hopefully that works. I really do. I think we're ready to take that next step in science. Yeah. <laughs> and get it done. No, that yeah. was the first first thing we discussed. Definitely the most reasonable improvement, I would say. Yeah, yeah. But I just seriously, I'm just gonna stand on a like the top of a 5G tower, meditate there for a couple weeks, absorb it all into me, and then <laughs> then I'll be ready to data stream. I don't like worth it. picture in your head like a, a 5G Doctor Manhattan, very similar. <laughs> yeah, with, with a beard, also with a beard, blue, yeah. Yeah, just he just has the Wi-Fi symbol, the little one, two, three little bars that on his forehead. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. So good, dude. But yeah, like Worlds was so electric, such a great time. The the car ride back, talking about so much dumb hero click stuff that we wanted to do, and like dumb and like also just cool projects we cannot wait to work on. So fun. Yeah, we really have that is some r such cool stuff coming down the pike here, guys. We're going to blow your minds with some as we got planned. They're going to be awesome. Already, just sir, first off, just drink in and enjoy all the world stuff because it's going to be constant worlds videos for the next few. It'll be so good. In the interview with Scott is going to be cool. Uh, the interview we're going to do, uh, Anthony Barnstable, a judge there, you know. Like, I mean, everybody, you know, I don't know Anthony, come on. He's awesome. So we're super excited to get him on the show here in a few. Like, such awesome content coming out of worlds. You're going you're gonna to feel like you were there. Trust me. It's it's literally so great. And hopefully you're going to want to go next year. I mean, yeah, I know it's cost prohibited for a lot of people, uh, but if you can swing it, if it like makes sense monetarily to you, even for like just like a few days, uh, it's a super fun event and it's worth well worth it, the time that it takes to get there and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a it was a grueling drive, but not once did I think oh, this isn't worth it. <laughs> oh. We want to uh, call the show there, guys, or is there anything else you want to add to the uh, podcast? I think, uh, I think maybe we throw eh, maybe a little, a few little spoilers out for Ooh, some stuff okay. here. Okay. A little, okay. little spoiler action here. 
So, you know, we found out that we would we were going to be doing this in May. So pretty much from May to about September, right? This is all we were focused on. We put a lot of very exciting projects on the back burner. And uh, we are going to be able to work on those a lot more very soon here. And, you know, if it's okay with you guys, revealing one of those projects. Thursday Throwdown, it's coming back. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a fun one. We've, we've had people message us saying they, they really missed out. They weren't able to be, like, a fan of the channel or watch it as Thursday Throwdown was happening. That was very much in a growth stage for Dial H. And going through and playing through every set was such an awesome time that Simi and I had. So I'm really excited to bring in this, like, new and improved version of Thursday Throwdown. And we're, yeah, I, we're I hope people also... really get into it finally getting rid of the roll 20 and tabletop simulator aspect of it as yes. good as those were to us um got a lot of people saying that like that's not like the most fun way to watch it which i agree it's awful hero clicks is all about being in person so uh mm-hmm. yeah hopefully by the time those start coming out we will be doing them live we'll be doing them i mean maybe not live stream but uh we'll be doing them in person so that you guys can actually ski, see the sculpts move and see like the dice and tokens move and you know there will be a lot less table flipping but other than that <laughs> probably yeah sadly there will be less table flipping that was such a fun tabletop simulator thing they had that we could flip the table at the end of every turn or at the end of every game you could do it every turn too but that would get a little tough um, that was oh, so good yeah so like, that's gonna be a fun fun like super great video good stuff guys literally so much good stuff and if you want to support us as we make this all happen again all this is going to be on youtube so please subscribe to the dial h for hero clicks youtube channel i imagine all of you are already of course you are why wouldn't you be and if you want to support us financially and give us a help us out with our budget through a lot of these we've been using a ton of the patreon money to get us lights and cameras and mics and all this cool stuff and, you know, to help cover costs for trips like this and everything. So we super appreciate it. if you want to join the Patreon, patreon.com slash dial for hero clicks. You know, like I said, $5 and above, that gets you access to a ton of really cool content. You join our Discord, which I think is one of the coolest Discords in hero clicks. You get to uh, see a lot of behind the scenes footage. You get to see a lot of videos early before they come out for everybody else to see, which is really cool. Also, so there's videos just... that never release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get to see those. Very too. true. Very true. Yeah, they're out there. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, two of them have nothing to do with hero clicks. So it's entirely just like fan stuff. But yeah, some, I mean, some are very important origin stories, I would say, or how Tiling came to be, uh, you know, in a way, sort of not really, that are really fun. But yeah. So, YouTube, Patreon, if you want to ask us questions, we're obviously skipping questions this week. We had a ton of world stuff to talk about. But we do have any questions for the show tab on our Discord. So if you're on our Patreon, or you can feel free to email us at dialageforherocooks at gmail.com or send us a message on Facebook or Twitter, Dialage for Hero Clicks on both of those. Twitter with a letter for, letter for, yeah, number four instead of F O R E. So get in touch with us any way you guys want. Let us know what you thought about the world's coverage. We'll obviously have a poll here coming soon about what you'll want to see in the future as far as world's coverage goes. Uh, any creative uh, improvements you guys might want us to make. Any um, feedback you have for what you did see. You know, like I said, keep it uh, keep it good. Keep it, uh, w- what's the term for it? Constructive criticism, you know. Keep it uh, as long as it's something we can build off of. That no, sounds great. Insult us. Yeah. <laughs> If you want to insult us, yeah, do keep in mind we're not a thousand dollar organization. Like we're not right. We're not able to just you know buy like a great setup like on the drop of the hat. Like we also have to feed ourselves and live in society and stuff like that. So we don't have uh, infinite amounts of money nor space to bring all sorts of crazy stuff to worlds, but we can try. I don't know about crazy stuff, but if you want some cool stuff, you can check out CoolStuffInc.com, where they've got not only the latest Heroclix singles, but also latest sealed products as well. So check them out, CoolStuffInc.com. Happy trails.
So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six how people humor? think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Epic Woo!